mid 80s. I was a commercial diver here. We'd swim up and down South Shore doing work, and you wouldn't see fish. They were you count five, six fish on your hands. That's how bad it got. Now you jump over, and there's the fish population so much better. But uh, you know, in 10 years, if, if these lionfish are left unchecked, we'll be in the same situation that we were. We'll lose our fish stocks. that big of an issue back then uh, but of course it's grown and the population has grown exponentially and so now we really do have quite a problem with the lionfish in Bermuda and that has prompted me to become more actively involved. There's no cure to this, you know, no easy solution at all. The lionfish are here and they're probably here to stay. So we are not looking at even the possibility of completely wiping out lionfish um, from Bermudian waters. What we're looking at is controlling them, getting their numbers low enough that they are not going to have this detrimental effect on the ecosystem. So our, our aim is to reduce the numbers below this critical threshold of lionfish abundance. And we're doing this through targeted removal on scuba diving and spearing. Ocean Support Foundation to help bring awareness to various environmental problems in the ocean around Bermuda. Um, we did it as a group of concerned citizens and the first order of business we wanted to tackle was the lionfish invasion. Um, this lionfish invasion in the Atlantic, I've said before, is the worst, I believe could be one of the worst environmental disasters ever to hit the Atlantic. Uh, they're eating up everything and the uh, devastation to the environment could be irreversible. Um, Bermuda needs to and has to defend themselves against these lionfish. Uh, we need to start taking them out of the water in large numbers and, and do it quickly. Uh, they're going to start uh, changing the way our ecosystem works if we don't. If we're diving on our hot spots, between two of us, about 40 to 50 fish. Um, when we're doing the work for the Darwin surveys, it depends where we are, we're not always on a hot spot. Um, sometimes we see five or six. Other times we don't see any, it's, which is part of why we're doing this research to try and find out where these fish are, why they're in certain spots and not, all, not everywhere. Yeah. The populations of lionfish have grown exponentially in the Caribbean and that's Bermuda is no exception. We now have lionfish on the order of about 350 fish per hectare on these deep reef hotspots, which is the same population that they're seeing in the Bahamas, which is considered one of the most heavily invaded regions. And with that density, they are able to actually reduce recruitment of other fish species by up to 85, 90%. And so you're going to see a trickle down effect. Um, so lionfish may not be eating you know, your large, uh, commercially important fish species, but they're eating their prey. And so then they're out competing those important, uh, economically important species for food. And so in the end, what you have is a reef that has a lot of lionfish and really nothing else. And without any of the other fish species, then nothing is eating the algae. And so the algae is going to overgrow the coral. And so you end up with a reef covered in algae and lionfish. Uh, but it's virtually dead. It's a completely different situation than you had 20 years ago, where the reef is covered with coral and a uh, diverse population of all different fish species. So the effects could be detrimental to Bermuda, both in terms of just changing biodiversity, but also economically, because you know this can affect tourism, it can affect our fisheries, it can affect, um, you know, if without the reef there, then you're talking about um, wave action. Uh, reefs are a natural buffer to wave action and storm surge. So without that, then you have you know more storm surge hitting the island, uh, and. It could just be very detrimental to Bermuda as a whole unless we tackle it head on, which is what we at Ocean Sport Foundation are trying to do. Another thing that we're doing is every dive that we do, we collect all the fish on the dive, all the lionfish that we see, bring them into the lab and take some samples of them. So we do gut content analysis, so we cut the fish open, cut up its uh, stomach, and look at all the different types of animals that are in that the fish is consumed. Some of the things that we've been finding in those stomachs are primarily small juvenile fish, 
like uh, blue-headed wrasse or yellow-headed wrasse, which are cleaner fish. We also find a lot of barbers, which are quite unique fish um, and primarily found at depth. Um, and a very interesting thing that we have found are a lot of shrimps, crust uh, so crustaceans like crabs, shrimps, lobsters, and we've even found uh, octopus in the stomach of lionfish before. With those lionfish samples, we also take a snip of the fins and a snip of the muscle tissue and save it for DNA analysis. And that's one of my main roles, is uh, my background is actually genetics, and so I'm sequencing the DNA of the lionfish that we catch. And I'll be comparing lionfish from all the different locations around Bermuda to try and see if we can find patterns of migration and recruitment of lionfish, and then also comparing that to populations in the greater Caribbean so that we can see patterns of migration to Bermuda from other locations. The lionfish are venomous, not poisonous. So the venom is only in the spines and not in the flesh. And the only way you can get affected by the venom is if it's actually injected into your skin or via the spine. You can, if you eat the flesh, there's no toxins in the flesh, you can eat the, eat the flesh um, quite safely. Um, but yeah, we'd like to create demand in restaurants for these fish by people asking for them. So the more fish we can get out there, people tasting, hopefully they'll create that demand. You can go for a swim off South Shore and uh, take a little spear with you and, uh, and patrol a particular area by your friend's house or by your house. You can take ownership of a particular area. Uh, a, a group of school children and a certain class can say, well, we're going to take ownership of this particular area on South Shore or on North Shore and own that area to make sure that it stays healthy and clean and wine fish. There is an enormous amount of work that the average civilian can do. Uh, here at Ocean Support Foundation, we're going to try and do the deep stuff. You know, we've got to hit that 200 foot range where the large numbers are. Uh, but if we can do that and keep their numbers back at that depth, and then, this, and then recreational people can keep them away in the shallows, we could have a chance of staying these uh, uh, invasions.